Okay, Ganon, let's do this. Ah! Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh son of a bitch! Well, shit. <laughs> Welcome back to the BrotherToGaming.com review show. My name is Eugene Morris, and his name is Zelda. Yes, it's a he, and his name is Zelda. When we first got him, we thought he was a girl. We found out otherwise, and the name stuck. Now, while I do respect The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I do think it's a great game, I'm more of an old-school Zelda fan. And when I say old-school, I'm referring to the original top-down gameplay, like with the first one, A Link to the Past, and the outstanding A Link Between Worlds. Rest in peace, 3DS. These are the Zelda games I prefer. Now, whenever I've played a 3D Zelda game, I've always seemed to lose interest. I don't know why, I'm just weird like that. I still have not gotten through Ocarina of Time, and I'm not gonna touch Majora's Mask because that just looks way too stressful. And while Breath of the Wild is great, and I do like it a lot, this game is very time-consuming. If you want to beat this game and fully experience it, this is the only game you'll be playing for the next half year. I'm still kind of surprised that Will hasn't done a review of this yet. Anyway, speaking of Will, I remember one time last year I visited him and he had The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I tried it out myself and uh, that was it. <laughs> I knew I was going to get this game well, as soon as I got a Switch. For those of you who don't know, this game is actually a remake of a Game Boy game that came out in 1993 and then got re-released in 1998. Now, unfortunately, I never got the chance to play the original version because, well, I didn't have a Game Boy growing up. Well, that's enough of the history. Let's see how this remake turned out. Here's my review of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The game begins with our hero Link out at sea, for some reason, as he gets caught up in a huge storm that ends up sinking his little ship. He is then washed up the next day on this island where he's rescued by some local townsfolk. Link soon discovers that he's trapped here, and his only way to get off is by awakening the island's guardian, the Windfish. So Link sets off on the island to collect the eight musical instruments to accomplish this. Ultimately, that brings him into conflict with the Sirens, who are doing everything they can to prevent Link from achieving his goal. Now, what makes this story so unique from other Zelda games is that a great deal of the mainstays in a normal Zelda game are not here. There is no Princess Zelda, the game does not take place in Hyrule, and Ganon is not the main villain. As a huge Mario fan though, I have to say it was a real treat to see so many Mario villains in this adventure, such as Goombas, Shy Guys, and even a Chain Chomp. Not only that, but there are also several other cameos in this game which do end up giving you a hint of what's going on here. Link is his usual quiet self, but also the other characters on the island don't get much in the way of actual character development either. Well, the closest one being Marion, who becomes Link's quasi love interest. That being said though, the game's story gets the job done. I really like the game's humor, and it's actually kind of a bittersweet tale. Now this is your traditional old school Zelda game. The first thing you have to do is head to the beach to get your sword, and then it's off you go. Maid Village acts as a sort of hub world where you can get help from the locals. You can also find shops here to get items for help. There's also a pond where you can do some fishing, and a library to get some more information on the island. Your objectives are to find the dungeons to fight the bosses and get the needed instruments. Along the way, you will require Link's trademark gear, from a shield for blocking, bow and arrow for long-range attacks, bombs that can do the same but are mostly used for opening up areas, a bottles for pixies who can replenish your health, a hookshot, a boomerang, etc. You can also get a feather that allows you to jump, which is kind of cool. Getting these are essential as you will need them in order to get access to certain areas. Included in this is the ocarina, which is always nice to see. In the pause menu, you can map out the items to the X and Y buttons and switch them out when need be. You can also see the map here, which will become more uncovered when you find new areas. For the most part, you'll be traveling on foot, but you can get access to warp zones for more quicker travel. Enemies here are your usual Zelda fare. Along the way, you will find rupees for purchasing items, hearts for replenishing energy, and seashells that you will need to collect in order to get access to the game's most powerful version of its sword. Another interesting wrinkle is when you meet up with Dampy, who introduces you to the Dungeon Arranging Mode, which essentially is a dungeon editor. 
This allows you to create your own area by slotting together dungeons you came across. It's a fascinating little mini game, and could possibly be a forerunner to a potential Legend of Zelda maker. Hey, maybe that'll get announced for Zelda's 35th anniversary. What could hope? The music perfectly matches the charming atmosphere of this game. Link's Awakening features probably my personal favorite rendition of the Zelda Overworld theme song. It's a track that I now immediately think of when I think of The Legend of Zelda. Overall, while the music is not as bombastic as other Zelda titles, it just fits the tropical atmosphere of this game, as it's both serene and elegant. I absolutely adore the way this game looks. Every time I look at it, it just reminds me of a toy box or claymation figures that have come to life. Especially when you look at those characters and beautiful environments. Everything just looks so darn cute, like when Link does his little charge attack. Hey, look at him go! <laughs> Isn't he so precious? Ow. Now, I do believe that you can make an argument that this is one of the best looking games for the Nintendo Switch, with everything so bright and colorful. Now, admittedly, however, this is not going to be a look that's going to appeal to everyone. Even my wife commented that it looked like a kid version of Zelda, and I do see what she means. He's definitely not as manly looking as he is in Breath of the Wild, or Super Mario 8 Deluxe for that matter. So, if you prefer that art style, then this look for this game will probably not appeal for you. Speaking of which, there are some technical flaws here, unfortunately. The frame rates do have a tendency to slow down from time to time. It's like this game was trying to muster as much as it could from the Nintendo Switch, but the system is struggling to keep up with it. It's not a game-breaking issue, not by any means, but it can be noticeable. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy or a sell? Traditional Zelda gameplay with a fresh coat of paint. Pretty music with charming visuals. Some technical issues here and there. Uh, I love this game, and I mean a lot. This and Super Mario Odyssey are so far my favorite games on the Switch, but I still believe this is a somewhat cautious buy. If you're a classic fan of this style, it's a definite buy. But if you're more of a casual fan, then the price may not be worth it. Obviously, this is not as big of a game as Breath of the Wild, and because this game is newer, it's slightly more expensive. So you may find more bang for your buck by playing that other Zelda game. But still, I personally found it to be a very charming adventure, and I don't regret my purchase at all. Now, excuse me, I'm gonna play it some more. You've been watching the BrotherhoodGaming.com review show. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and make sure to visit our store for some cool TBOG merchandise. As always, remember, keep on gaming. Well, that's enough of the history. Let's see how this remake came out. Here's my review of The Legend of the Cookies. Hang on. Buddy, buddy, hang on. Hang on. Okay. Oh, poor Zelda. <laughs>